Hi, my name is Jenica Lohr, and I am doing my educational giant report on Johann Heinrich Pestalozzi. Excuse my pronunciation. Um, he was born in Zurich, Switzerland on January 12, 1746. His father died when he was five years old, and he was raised by his mother and a woman named Babeli, who helped hold their family together and worked with sacrifice and love to keep their family um, running even after they should have become bankrupt. He uh, was able to attend uh, both an elementary and a secondary school. His elementary school experience was not very enjoyable for him. His teachers used methods that didn't that didn't quite fit his uh, his learning style. They used rote memorization and corporal punishment and um, book learning, um, which wasn't very effective for him. And this ineffective experience, I think, was what fueled a lot of his inspiration for his ideas on educational reform. When uh, he wasn't very good at writing, he wasn't very good at spelling, and he wasn't very good at math. Uh, he was always felt like a physical weakling compared to the rest of his class, and one of the books described him as a mother's boy, which is a little bit ironic. Um, when he reached the secondary school, called the Gymnasium, uh, is also called the Collegium Humanitas, he had a much better time there. His uh, teacher, his name, his teacher's name was Bodmer, helped him. Uh, he, he, this teacher really connected with him. He would take the students on walks and learn to understand them. He would teach them things that really applied, not just out of books. Um, Johann learned a lot from this teacher and took his ideas sometimes to the extreme. If the teacher said that we should live life more simply, Johann became a vegetarian and slept on the floor. If he, the teacher said we needed to seek after freedom, Johann joined the Helvetic Society, which was a radical political youth group, and uh, got into some trouble there. He once beat himself until he bled, to prove to himself that he could withstand any pain that seeking the cause brought him. He went to, uh, <laughs> he went to jail for three days once because um, the magistrates suspected him of uh, helping to free an author of a controversial paper. He was innocent, but that kind of closed a few doors in his career opportunities. He originally went to school to be a minister, but he was too shy for that, so he turned to law instead. But because of his uh, <laughs> his trouble in the Helvetic Society, the magistrates weren't going to allow him to be a lawyer, so he instead turned to farming. In 1769, he married uh, a childhood friend named Anna Schultes. She, um, <laughs> she and Pestalozzi... Uh, had a son in 1780. Uh, he named his son Jean-Jacques after Rousseau, who was one of his greatest influences. He taught his son by using and expanding upon the methods in Rousseau's book Emile, and then he published his own book about how he raised his son, um, like the differences and the similarities between his and his work and Emile. Although he enjoyed teaching his son, the agriculture business at his farm didn't go well. Uh, he instead transformed it to a to an industrial school. He tried to self-sustain a school by uh, he enlisted enrolled students who were orphans and who were uh, very very poor, so that they could um, pay for their education by working. They learned how to work. And one of his interesting quotes was that we must train the poor to poverty. That sounded a little harsh to me at first, but in, I realized that um, his idea was to train the poor to look after themselves, to find out what they have to work with and to work with it and to make the best lives they can. They don't need to be trained to be aristocrats because they're not. They have what they have to work with and they can be trained to enjoy it. Um, this orphanage school did not turn out very well. It closed in 1780, and they almost lost everything. They were able to retain the farm at Neuf, but weren't able to uh, retain anything else. Um, he became a writer after that. In 1781, he published a fairly popular book called Leonard and Gertrude, which was followed years later by a book called How Gertrude Teaches Her Children, which still influences um, writers today. So that's one of his great contributions. Um, his next... Uh, educational job was in 
1798, when the government asked him to take charge of an orphanage at Stans. This was a city that had been recently war-torn, and the two children had nowhere to go, nowhere to live, no family. Um, he faced opposition from the community, who just saw him as a means of the government to oppress them. So he struggled teaching them. He sacrificed and he showed love to students, and he made a great impact on their lives in the five months he was with them. Uh, the orphanage was closed when the French armies came back to the area, and Pestalozzi was never able to go back. His next job was uh, between 1800 and 1804. He worked in a school in Bergdorf, and the school was moved to a castle in Yverdon in 1805. He taught there until his retirement in 1825, when he moved back to Neuhof until his death in 1827. His basic philosophy of education is a lot similar to my own, and so that's kind of why I chose to, to research him. Um, he believed in the realist uh, theory that tangible things are considered primary and ideas are considered secondary. Uh, sensory experience is the best way to learn, hands-on experience and learning in the natural way that children would learn if we didn't have and books to learn out of or people to lecture at us. Um, the role of the teacher was to develop each child and unlock their true potential. Uh, he, he thought that children needed to grow socially, morally, uh, emotionally, physically, and intellectually, and that um, everything should focus on the whole child. He uh, believed that books should not be used unless absolutely necessary, and that um, he, he taught his students learning using concrete, uh, hands-on experiences first, and then moving on to abstract facts from books and from lecture later, when they were ready for it um, at their natural pace. He believed that the home is the critical point in educating children and that things should be, everything in education should be based on the home. Um, he said there can be no doubt that within the living room of every household are united the basic elements of all true, all true human education across its whole range. His uh, thoughts poured out in his book still influence progressivism. Um, he and the ideas that students should be taught through hands-on experience and through natural methods. Um, there's a great difference reflected in the difference between Pestalozzi's teachers and between our elementary school teachers today who focus on the children and who focus on activities. And I think it has been a wonderful, wonderful change in our educational system uh, through Pestalozzi's ideas and philosophies.